Hi guys, Jamie Dunbar from Dragon Boot Studios here, and today I'm just going to do a little video tutorial on how to set up um, sticky controls for a facial rig. Um, now, if you guys have been following me on the uh, the Dragon Boots Studios Facebook page, um, you'll know that uh, well, this little dude here is uh, the little pokey machine from a, a short film that I'm working on, and you'll know that over the last few months I've been trying to find a uh, a cohesive way of building a really nice facial rig. Um, which up until recently every system that I've tried has had some form of limitation either it's been you know, completely um, uh, controller based, joint based or uh, curve based um, which means that there's sort of no shortcuts to to setting up a facial expression or you can use blend shapes which is really fast for uh, setting up quick facial expressions but doesn't give you that additional bit of control and I've never been able to find a way to combine the two. You always end up with uh, double transforms or um, things, or um, the controller is not sticking to the blend shapes properly. Um, I've finally found a way around that, and it's it, it takes a little bit of extra setup, um, some things that may not necessarily be uh, immediately intuitive, but it does work, and it's not so unintuitive that it's a colossal pain in the backside to do. So let's just jump in and have a look. At the way that it works. So I've already got this um, this face here set up with uh, a whole heap of blend shapes which are already locked into this little fellow here. Um, so you can see that he's got his usual blinks. Um, he can you know have a little bit of a smile, he, he can get angry, and a whole range of other things. And these are all blend shapes. Um, even even this little fellow here is a uh, is a blend shape, even though it looks like you know it's a traditional joint based method uh, blend shape um, so as you can see these are these are really fast so you know if you want to make him look confused or worried or whatever um, those are immediately there but uh, as you can see in this it's perfectly symmetrical so I mean I, I could come in here and you know reduce one to give him a little bit of asymmetry you know make the animation that little bit more appealing um, but I, I'm sort of limited you know uh, if for example you know I wanted to just pull this one up and across just that little bit more. I don't have the control to do that, the only way to do it would be to build an entirely new blend shape, um, which which would be uh, time consuming and, and not necessarily all that intuitive. So what we've got in here is a secondary system and if I just bring up this one, uh, at the moment I've just got it set up with joints, you should probably go through and set them all up with controllers, but as you can see if I come in here and grab the joint and wiggle his brow around. I'll just turn this on so it's a little bit easier to see. You can see that these are all set up very very nicely um, and you can get that little bit of additional control so if you wanted to pull that eyebrow up a little bit higher you can. Um, now what's really nice about this is if I come in here and let's just go grab the surprised one and move those up you can see that the controllers actually stick to the geometry uh, it's particularly obvious if you just go in here and have a look at the smile. You can see those really stick to the mesh. It's great. Uh, and then on top of that, you can come in here and give it that little bit of extra push. Um, so this is this is kind of my ideal system. This is what I've been looking for. Um, there are a couple of uh, other limitations, but there's ways around them. So um, let's just set this guy back to default, and um, I'm going to show you how to build this sucker. So just give me a sec while I set up the scene properly. All right, welcome back. Um, so let's let's uh, try and set this little sucker up. Okay, so as you can see here, I've gone and uh, put all of my joints on the face where I'd like them. Oh, and because I've um, um, because uh, I've basically broken my previous scene to create this, you can see that they still have some outputs here. Um, that should not be there, so just go in here to select it, select the bind pose and delete it, and you can see that it's been removed from all of these. That's much better. Okay, so select all the joints, select the skin or the mesh, go smooth bind. Um, as you can see, we get a very gooey default, but you can see that these are successfully uh, bound. So now what we want to do is get your um, your uh, your hypermesh the yeah, hypermesh parent script here. Now you need to do this in this particular order. You need to select the mesh, 
and then go through and select all of the joints that you want to be stuck to the mesh and simply run the script. <coughs> As you can see these are still skinned appropriately and if I just come in here and just grab a vert, and let's just put on um, soft selection and move that around, you can see that that is still stuck and this guy's moving a little bit as well. So, in fact, let's just demonstrate this a little bit easier. Let's unlock that and move this fellow around. As you can see, they stick perfectly. Um, now, do keep in mind that you do need to do it in that specific order. So you need to skin them first and then go and use your... Um, your uh, hypermesh parent script, otherwise you, you'll end up with double transforms on the joints when you try to move this fellow around. So let's just go through and group these just to keep it a little bit more tidy. Poke machine face control, I'll try and spell it, Ctrls01. Um, okay, so that's that portion set up. Now obviously you want to go through and bind this guy properly and I might just quickly do that um, in a sec but first let's bring up uh, my blend shapes. Where are my blend shapes? Blend shapes. Oh, they're already unhidden. That's okay. Um, it's kind of all stacked on top of each other at the moment but as you can see we've got a whole range of different things going on here both for um, you know, left and right sides. Um, just whoops set all of those back on top of each other, it doesn't really matter. Select all of them, select the mesh, and go create deformers, blend shapes. Um, and as you can see, this now works. Um, but as you can see, the controllers aren't following along. Um, so, little trick for those that may not know it, select the mesh, right click on it, and go down to inputs, and go all inputs, and you'll get this little window, and you want the blend shapes to be, if, uh, at the moment it's at the top, you want it to be at the bottom. So right click on it and just drag it down, make sure it's the last one and the skin cluster is um, at the top. Close that, and if we go back in here and grab the uh, the U shape and drive it, you'll see, look at that, they're attached. Not only are they attached, but when we grab this guy, you can see, obviously the skinning is absolutely terrible at the moment, but that's stuck on there. Um, let's just get rid of you and let's go with the smile. Oops. That's only one side. Do the other side and you can see stuck successfully. We see his teeth are poking through a little bit there. That's probably not great. And pull that back down. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's how you set up um, some sticky joints. Now I'm also going to do a uh, a little bit of a plug here, just in terms of skinning. Uh, if you haven't already found it, um, just do a Google search for NG Skinning Tools. I've got a little button here to start it up. Um, it's it's as you can see, it's uh, currently still in beta, but this this changes the way that um, you you do your skinning rather than just kind of skinning straight onto the mesh. This does it in more of a um, a layer based system where you can sort of use transparency and anyway a little bit confusing to go into right now, check out the website, it's got a bunch of tutorials, but basically once you've um, once you've used this, uh, odds are you'll probably never want to go back to doing it the old way again. Um, so if I just sort of come in here, I'll select this one and go flood everything. So this is, this is just my facial rig bone, um, it's the little one that sits back in there, and it's basically just a holder for the rest of the face. Um, so if I just go back into paint, and what you can do here is go new layer, let's just go face, you'll probably have a couple of different layers here, but for simplicity's sake I'm just going to jump straight in, and then you just sort of paint it like you usually would. Um, and we'll probably still end up with some rather dodgy, gooey results here, but <coughs> at least it'll be a little bit better, so hold with me for a sec. Um, you can actually mirror these, but um, it's one problem at the moment is that, let's just bring up the initialize, as you can see it um, links up, and as you can see it's highlighting them both there, the, the mirrored side, but for some reason 
as you can see here, it hasn't connected these two properly. Um, I'm not sure whether it's got to do with a, a naming convention or what exactly, but I find that it often doesn't link them up properly. You can go in and here and make a, uh, a manual association so you can basically link anything with anything. Um, but at the moment that's going to kind of restrict my um, my ability to mirror until I've set that up properly. So we'll just bypass that for a second and just go in and do all of this manually. This is probably going to look absolutely terrible. Just about there. Let's get that one in. That one in. Oops, I actually don't want it to be pulling on the nose. Uh, and then come back to the paint here. And it's got some really nice smoothing tools. The smoothing tools are just that little bit better than the default tools in Maya. Anyway, um, now that we've you know kind of got this basically set up right, I'll turn this back on so you can see properly. Yeah, you know, they're obviously not great, but. You know, for all of about 30 seconds work, they're pretty good. Um, so now, if we come in here and we turn the smile back on, you can see that those are still sticking, and we've got a little bit of extra tweaking we can do. You know, come in here and pull those back down a little bit. They're a little too strong, and okay, that looks ridiculous. But as you can see, incredibly powerful, and um, gives you the speed of blend shapes and the ability to come in and finesse things. So I hope that's useful. Um, if you've got any questions